Hello, welcome to episode 25 of the Lupin Bar podcast. My name is Kate and I'm coming to you from North Wales in the UK. Um, I've got Charlie with me, she's behind the camera and she's curled up on her sheepskin rug underneath my desk. So you might hear a little bit of dog dreaming or claw clicky clickety click on the floors um, as we podcast or you might not, I'm not sure. Um, hope everybody's had a lovely few weeks since uh, my last podcast. Um, we've had really rainy weather here in North Wales, pretty much I think in the UK. Um, so August so far has been a bit soggy. Uh, we had a lovely sunny morning today, so me and Charlie took advantage and had our lunch out in the sunshine. Um, so I'm hoping for an Indian summer. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to wish the rest of August away, perhaps the rest of August can be nice and sunny too. But uh, September's usually nice, so let's look forward to a little bit more sunshine, hopefully. Um, right, so I've been really busy. Um, I've got... What have I got to show you? I've got another list of stuff here because it's a lot easier for me if I make a list. Um, I've got quite a bit of stuff to show you that's been in the post, that's come in the post. Um, I've got a non-knitting project to show you, which you might know about if you've been on, seen my Instagram feed, um, or if you're in the Ravelry group, because I posted a couple of pictures about it there. Very exciting project, loving it. Um, I've done another little intro uh, to the podcast, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I got lots of feedback about the last one, and it was so much fun to put together. Uh, so basically that's footage from just over the last few weeks really, just since the last podcast. Um, the butterfly, uh, if you saw that in the intro, suddenly just appeared as a chrysalis on my kitchen wall and now it seems like ages ago. It was. It's ages ago. Um, it came out of nowhere. I cannot think how a caterpillar ended up where it did in my kitchen. It would have had to make some monumental journey across a hessian, a very large hessian rug, up, somehow it would have got in through the front door and then through another door, over the kitchen floor, up some kitchen units, and then why it chose to be where it was, I'm not sure, but, well, the only other explanation I can think of is, at this time of year we tend to have our back door open all the time, it's on a little hook, and that means Charlie can go in and out as she pleases, and, well, it's just nice to have the fresh air. Um, but it means we get birds in the kitchen sometimes. We've had several. Um, I've had to rescue several birds and put them back out again. I'm just wondering if a bird maybe came in with it, the caterpillar in its beak, dropped it in panic and confusion, and that's the only way I can think that a caterpillar got where it did in my kitchen. Anyway, I didn't even notice it until... because it was tucked away in a corner. Um, I didn't notice it until it was probably about halfway through its chrysalis stage. Um, so I put a few photographs on Instagram about that too. Um, and I watched and watched and watched its progress and I could see it developing in its chrysalis as they, um, what's the word, as they develop more in their chrysalis um, you can see the butterflies details starting to come out like the pattern on their wings and the shape of their body it's really quite fascinating. Um, so I watched and watched and watched and then lo and behold I came into the kitchen one day and there was a butterfly on the wall. <laughs> I think it's uh, cabbage white. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, so that's why you saw me with a butterfly in the house first of all and then taking it into the garden. Um, I left it there for a little while because they have to stretch their wings and get strength. Um, so I left it for a few hours and then Charlie and me took the butterfly into the garden as soon as we got outside. I was hoping to get some more film of Charlie looking at it, but as soon as she came, brought her nose up to look at the butterfly it flew off and it was gone in a flash. So that was nice, the butterfly got to fly off happily. Um, you probably also saw some very very speeded up footage of canoeing. <laughs> No, yes, canoeing. Yes, the kayaks, the thing you sit on top. We got a canoe. Um, two weeks ago, I think. Yep, yeah, two weeks ago, 
um, I said to Avion, I really want to go on a canoe. Can we go on a canoe at the weekend? And he said, yeah. So we got in the car on Saturday morning, two weeks from today. It's the middle of August now. Um, and we drove to one of the nearby lakes. We're surrounded by lots of mountains and lakes here in Snowdonia. Um, and lots of them are tourist attractions. They have um, campsites. Um, the lakes might have campsites around the bottom of them or they're um, well-known walking routes um, around the lakes or as a starting point to go up a mountain. Um, and a lot of them have, well not a lot of them, but some of them have um, things like water sports hire um, on the lake as well. So we went to a lake called Hinguinant. If you are visiting North Wales, Snowdonia, I highly recommend a little visit to Hinguinant if you fancy going on a canoe. It's six pounds. It's six pounds for the kayak for an hour. Um, it was about 18 pounds to get the canoe because the canoe's a lot bigger um, and I, they probably haven't got as many of those but we went in the canoe because then you can throw all your stuff into that. It's like an open Canadian style canoe and that's what I fancied doing. So we hired that for an hour. Um, we just paddled around on the lake, um, up and down. There's a really quiet little river by the side of the lake that runs into the lake. Um, so it was so much fun. The water in the river was crystal clear and it was such a beautiful morning. It was a beautiful morning while we were on the canoe and then as soon as we finished with the canoe and we had to take it back, um, we got back in the car and we drove to the nearby village to where we live. Um, so that we could go to a couple of shops and get some lunch, um, which is very unusual for, for us. It was really quite a fun outing actually for us. Um, the heavens opened, so we really, I think we got really lucky with the timing of that. So we had a lovely time doing that. And then the following weekend, which was the weekend we've just had, we've been up a mountain. So I don't know, I don't think I've put any footage of that in the intro because I didn't take my camera with me, my camera camera, which is this one. Um, uh, but I did take some photos and videos on my phone, so they are on my Instagram feed if you fancy having a look at where we were this weekend. Um, we went up, <laughs> it's a funny story, we were aiming for a mountain called Avoil Grach. Don't know what that means in English, that's in Welsh. Um, that's the one Avion really fancied going up, because he's been up quite a lot of the mountains and he's doing the thing where he likes to tick them off a bit. Um, I'm not bothered which one I go up as long as it's not scary. Don't mind going up the same one twice. Avion likes to do a different one every time. So I don't mind. Uh, he checked it wasn't going to be too scary basically and I said yes, let's do it. So we were aiming for that one. Um, that It entailed a really lovely walk by a, a, a reservoir or a dam, with a dam. Um, and then sort of through some, hmm, in Welsh you call it a nant. And I think in English it's sort of like not quite really like a valley because there's another word for valley or well, Welsh speakers might want to correct me on that one but a nant is like all I can do is this it's like that <laughs> um, you know that's the nant those are mountains or hills and that's kind of a nant I think I think I've got that right anyway that's what it looked like and we sort of had to walk in a big long curve up and around and eventually you got to the top um, and then there was a little bit of a detour along a track, um, a path to get to the summit of the Voilgrach um, mountain that Avian wanted to go up. However, our map reading skills failed us on that day and despite asking several other groups of walkers, there were quite a few people, not that many people, but we did come across a few other people on, on that walk. Um, especially at the top of the mountain, um, we ended up somehow going up the wrong mountain. <laughs> Doesn't bode well really, does it, for future mountain expeditions, but um, to be fair, they were right next to each other, so I don't know if that makes that a little bit less ridiculous and scary, but... <laughs> And you know, the bit, essentially the big hills. It wasn't like a big, scary, rocky mountain that we had to do climbing and stuff. It was a great big hill, really, um, that's called a mountain. So, yeah, 
it's it's fine. I was happy with it because I've not been up it. The one we ended up going on, and we only discovered it once we were on it because Avion looked around at the landscape. We had an ordnance survey map. We had all the stuff that we needed. Um, we just didn't read it properly. Um, and as we were on the top of the mountain that we'd conquered uh, with lots of other people, um, Avion actually quietly said to me, "Don't." ask anybody where we are because I don't think we're on the right mountain. <laughs> and I did. So I kept my mouth shut. But he said, I think that's the one we were supposed to go up and he pointed across to the actual summit of the mountain we should have been on, which was, I don't know, half a mile the other way. Oh, never mind. I was really tired by then. The one that we ended up going on, being at the top of accidentally, is called um, Carnes Llewellyn. And, interestingly, it's the second highest mountain in Snowdonia, Snowdon being the first. So I was actually pretty pleased with it. Avion, although he has been up it before, he kind of didn't realise that until he was on it. Um, he kept saying, I'm sure I've been up this, I'm sure I've been this way before. And yes, he had, because he's been up it with his brother. So, <sighs> But I think we were, I was very happy with it. I was so tired by the end. He wanted to then go down that one and go up the other one, and I was said, there's no way that's happening, we've done a mountain, we've done a really good job, let's go down. Um, it did take us a lot longer than we thought it would. But we saw frogs on the way up, which was a massive bonus. How unusual. Um, Avion kept spotting little frogs halfway up this mountain. There was a really boggy sort of springy bit, there's loads of waterfalls and um, underground springs, it's a really beautiful place. Um, and we just kept seeing all these little frogs. Um, Again, I've put a photo of one that hopped onto his shoe on Instagram, if you want to have a look at that. Um, I was absolutely beside myself with excitement because I absolutely love frogs. And we realised a little bit later when we were doing our not-so-great, little bit rubbish map reading, that um, the place that, where we'd seen the frogs, because it was sort of a certain pocket of the moorland where they were, was actually called, now I'm going to say it in Welsh, don't know if I'm going to get it right, um, Fynon Llefant, a, a Fynon I think the words were in that order, and Fynon is springs and Llefant is frog, I think I've got the right word there, it's a bit similar to some other Welsh words, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, so that was quite um, exciting because we didn't know to look out for it, we just found it because we saw the frogs and then we realised what it was called, frog springs. Don't know how they got up there in the first place, but um, yeah. So we've had some surprising nature discoveries over the last few weeks as well, which has been exciting. Um, so that was um, that was lovely. Uh, and then there's a few other bits. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of a footage, a little bit of footage of um, the start of my exciting felt project, which I'm going to show you on the podcast. So you probably saw a little bit. You've probably got a good idea of what it is. Um, but yeah, I'll show you a bit more close up in the podcast. I'll just have a little drink of my tea. I'm drinking a very delicious tea in um, a very lovely mug. So first of all I'll show you the mug. I got this for my birthday. I've had my birthday by the way. It was quite a few weeks ago now. I had a lovely day. Um, and this came from Avion's sister and it is a gardening mug from Kew Gardens. I love it. I've been using it all the time. I really love it. It says grow a garden eat healthier, save money. And it's got some really lovely pictures of vegetables. And in the mug I have got some delicious tea that came in the post, a total surprise package from lovely Anna, um, who is one of my Ravelry friends in our Loop and Bar Ravelry group. So this package came from Germany. I'll show you. I've got I've just selected a few things out of the package to show you because I've got so much to show you today. Um, I thought I won't show you all of it, but I did put a photograph of the whole package um, on, in the Ravelry group. So if you're interested to have a look what else I got, just have a look there in the Knit Lounge thread. Um, Anna sent me, and I'll tell you the story about why the package came as well. It was a, a birthday package for me, um, and it is related to the bunting that you might or might, you probably can't see it behind me actually, I'm thinking it's too high. I'll get it down and show you, but also I put some footage of the bunting uh, in the intro too, so you will have seen that already hopefully. 
So anyway, I'll tell you the rest of the story in a bit, but Anna sent me um, a little parcel and the tea that I'm drinking is this delicious jasmine tea that was in the parcel. Now then, it says jasmine, tea and keramic. So I don't know if it's got jasmine in the tea or if it is, if that's the company. Whatever it is, it's totally delicious and it's got strawberry and orange in it and it's absolutely gorgeous. So there's the tea in this lovely little package. Hmm. It looks it's absolutely gorgeous and it, when you open the package it smells so delicious. I love orangey things so I'm really enjoying that. And she also sent me something else delicious. I've eaten some of the other stuff. We've got some chocolate which we had straight away. Me and Avion shared that. And then there were two bars of marzipan. Um, one of them is half eaten and this is the other one. I just love the shape of it as well. It's gorgeous. I've got that the right way around here. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Can't wait to eat this. I kind of want to keep it for a while as well and just treasure it because I really love the shape of it and the, like it's so compact and lovely. So that's going to sit there for a little while and um, while I eat the rest of the marzipan I just have a little bit at a time. It's so delicious, it's quite rich and it's covered in dark chocolate so you just need a little bite of it when you have a cup of tea and it's so lovely. And then um, she sent me some fabrics which I've left over there, um, beautiful print fabrics with some birds on. One's got flamingos on, which is um, a lot of fun, and the other one is a green fabric with some little blue birds that look, they're the same sort of shape and size as a blue tip, but they're like a blue bird, so that's really lovely. And I might make a cushion out of that. Like I say, if you want to see that, have a look in the Ravelry group in the Knit Lounge. I've put a picture there. But, oh. I think one of the most treasured and precious things that I got in that parcel was this hand spun yarn. This is spun by Anna. Anna is on Ravelry, she's called Obsti. But I can't remember Anna's name on Instagram. I can never remember because it's a different name. But anyway, this is what Anna sent me. It's her hand spun, um, hand spun by herself. And oh, I can't wait to use it. It's the most beautiful colour. It's so neat, it's so well spun, it's so beautiful and it feels quite rustic, um, it's a lovely warm grey and I think um, Anna did actually suggest maybe it would make a lovely little doll jumper and I'm thinking she's right, so I think that's what I want to make with it, so here's the doll, I've shown the dolls before on the podcast but here's one of them, um, if you haven't seen this before but, or if you have, here's a reminder. And she hasn't got a jumper, she hasn't even got a proper dress, it's just got some fabric pinned on her, so I need to make her some clothes. Um, but I think she's going to get a jumper made in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hand spun yarn. So I'm really looking forward to using that. I might do that this weekend. So I'll just pop her back. Whoops. She just sits on there, put my yarn there. So thank you, thank you so much Anna, um, that was such a lovely surprise and that leads me to talk about the bunting that I um, showed in the intro. Um, I've shared it on, pretty sure I shared it on Instagram and definitely in the Ravelry group in the Knit Lounge because that's where the bunting came from. Um, on my birthday or possibly the day before I received a parcel through the post and um, it, I didn't recognise any of the handwriting and I thought, who's it come from? So uh, I opened it up on my birthday, obviously. I guessed it was for my birthday, so I waited for my birthday. I opened it up and inside were the most beautiful, wonderful surprises for me. Um, I'm just going to show you the bunting, but inside the parcel there were all sorts of lovely little things like stitch markers, um, there was a lovely card, um, there was some fabric. Oh, I think I'll show you the fabric as well. I'll get that out since I'm draw. Oh. <laughs> oh, hang on. I'll show you that too because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head everything that was in it, but I showed a picture of that too on the Ravelry group. I'm probably going to say that a lot on this episode. Um, so if you're interested to see, have a look in the Knit Lounge. You'll have to scroll back a bit because it's quite a chatty group. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in that thread. But the bunting, I'm going to get it down, it's hanging above me. I hung it up here, this is where it's living, um, but you, it's not in the shot. So I've, just, I've only just realised it's not in the shot, so I'll just get it down. 
Um, and I can just show you it a bit closer. I'm going to move my chair now. Oh, oh now then, I'll have to stand on the stool, I think. I had to put... Oh! <laughs> right, okay, got it. I had to put a new hook in my wall so that I could um, hang the rest of the bunting up. But, oh my gosh, in the package was the most beautiful bunting ever. Here it is. I'll show you each triangle. And it actually made me cry. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not crying now. I just got something in my throat then. <laughs> but when I opened it, it made me cry. Um, I was just so touched and it was just so out of the blue, to completely unexpected. I didn't know, I couldn't work out how anybody in the Ravelry group knew when my birthday was, but Joe, naughty Joe, <laughs> Um, had got a group of lovely ladies together. Um, I think they've called themselves the Lupin Bar Ladies from this uh, naughty venture that they did. And um, went about basically doing some detective work without me knowing to find out when my birthday was. And unbeknown to me, over the course of, I don't know if it was like a couple of weeks or something, um, they tricked it out of me. They tricked the information out of me. I still can't quite remember exactly how I gave them my birthday, but it was something to do with um, Sylvia. Um, <laughs> it was something to do with Sylvia <laughs> and her star signs. So anyway, it was all good fun. Um, I know it's very hilarious once I found out exactly what was going on. Um, but basically they sort of tripped the information out of me without me even realising. So I disclosed my birthday, which I don't generally tend to put that on Facebook and stuff just because, yeah, it's, I don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, what a lovely surprise. Um, so they knew when this, they knew when my birthday was, and then Joe organised um, the ladies that were involved in this um, each to crochet a triangle of bunting and send it to her. Um, and she's in the UK, and um, and then she actually put the bunting all together um, and sewed it all into the bias binding and, and made it into the bunting it was. And Anna, who sent me the beautiful yarn and the marzipan... You know what just happened there, don't you? So Anna, who sent me the beautiful um, package with the marzipan and the yarn and the fabrics and etc. Um, she had actually sent Jo a triangle of bunting as well. She had knit, um, knitted or crocheted one. Um, and it, but the envelope, and she's, that's from Germany, so it got sent from Germany. The envelope with a note inside it, reached Joe, but the bunting wasn't in it. Um, which is, I think it had been opened on the way, I'm not sure if, I think Joe said that the envelope had been opened or something or tampered with. So who on earth, somewhere between Germany and Somerset, would open a, a small letter-shaped parcel and take out a piece of knitted bunting I have no idea why they would do that, but they did. <laughs> well, they must have done, because the bunting wasn't in the parcel. Um, so that was a really big mystery. It's never been solved. And um, But Jo sent me a photograph because Anna had taken a photograph and she showed Jo. She sent that to Jo, and Jo sent me a little note with a photograph of it. Um, and I think that's why, it, because Anna's bunting didn't arrive and wasn't sadly included in this beautiful bunting, um, she sent me the parcel afterwards. So. So the, the gesture and the thought were there, and it's um, so I. The, Anna's triangle is in the bunting in spirit. So here it is. I'll show you the bunting, and each triangle has got a little label saying who sent it to me. So um, hopefully I'll get all of this right. I, I think that it says on here who they're all from. Yeah. So this one's from Laura. It's got the most beautiful pink yarn and a really really pretty crocheted edge. If you can see that. This one's from Ange, Rainbow Ange, who's got her own knit shop, very jealous, <laughs> beautiful, that one's a crocheted one, who's the next one from Teresa, tea and toast, look at the little flower, that's a knitted one, it's so gorgeous, 
I hope I'm showing you these okay. Like, I hope they're showing up okay. <gasps> There's a flip-flop stitch marker on this one. I've kept all the little knickknacks on them so far because I just think, I just want to keep it all in, intact. Um, Emma, lovely Emma, who sent me the beautiful pouch that I showed you in the last episode. Look, it's got a tassel on it. Who would ever think to put tassels on a bunting? I think that's fabulous. So that's a beautiful one. Really nice chunky knitted one with some flowers on. This is Joanne. I recognise the card. Oh, Joanne in Canada. I have to tell you, this is actually was originally stitched on. There's this beautiful flower. I say was because, I don't know if this is naughty or not, but I went to a family wedding um, and I decided I wanted to wear a little crocheted or knitted flower. I think it's crocheted. And I was looking at the bunting and admiring it and my eyes fell on this beautiful flower and I snipped it off the bunting with my scissors and stitched a little badge on the back. <laughs> Joanne, I hope you forgive me, but it was all because I just wanted to wear this for the family wedding on my tea dress. <laughs> so this actually came with me to my family wedding and I wore it and then and I put it back exactly where it was. So. Nobody will ever know, except you will, because I've actually just told you. <laughs> um, so that's that one. Ah, oh, this is from Wendy. I already know, I remember. Ah, oh, Wendy. Look, it's got some lavender on it. Really beautiful. Is it crocheted? I think that's a crocheted lavender. How lovely. And then this one. Sylvia. Pole dark. Love it. This one's made in a, oh, it's got a little stitch mark on the bottom as well. I think Sylvia's making these stitch markers. I think they're so beautiful. I'll just show you that. Oops. And Sylvia actually sent me some more of these as well. I think, I'm hoping you can see that. And the yarn is, uh, I think it's the Pole Dark colorway. Me and Sylvia are really big fans of Pole Dark. It's finished now, but it's coming back, so that's brilliant. And this one was from Jo, the naughty lady who organised all of this. And it's got a little bird stitch marker, which I'm not sure if I can show you because it's the wrong way around. Oh, I'm hoping you can see that. If not, it's a little bird, like a little dove. And a beautiful heart stitched on it. Gorgeous colours, all of these. Gorgeous, gorgeous colours. The next one is from Lisa in Cornwall. There's another little flower. I love all these little flowers. There's the flower. And that one's a little knitted one with some flowers on. And there's these little buttons all the way along, which is gorgeous. I love this binding. And this one. From Sarah, my guinea pig friend. <laughs> She's not a guinea pig. She's just got guinea pigs like me. <laughs> gorgeous that's got flowers as well and a little heart in the middle they're all so lovely I love the way that they've all been well not all but some of them have been edged in different colours as well or just got little embellishments on and this one from Francis oh my gosh this one's got a pom pom on the bottom again totally love the idea of putting something like a tassel or a pom pom on the bottom of the bunting amazing um, and I love the colour of it as well and then I just love it, it's so creative, she's put, because we've got a gardening thread in the Loop and Bar Ravelry group, Francis has put l &B for Loop and Bar, we love gardening, we do, I hope Francis has had lots of time to do some gardening, I hope it hasn't been too soggy on your allotment Francis, it's been a bit wet in our garden. So that's my bunting and you can't see it behind me but it is usually hung just on my dresser and then a little bit more around the wall and it brightens up my day every time I walk in here and have a look at it. I love it so much. So massive massive thank you to the lovely Lupin Bar ladies who took part in doing that um, little secret birthday surprise for me. Um, I was really overwhelmed. Um, I love it. I love it. I really treasure that. And I just, I did mention that I'd show you some fabric. Laura sent me a little bit of extra. I got some other extra things. I can't show you all of them because one, I've dispersed them around the room into various places where I want to use them. Um, and two, probably haven't got time to show you everything because I've got all this other stuff in front of me to show you. But Laura sent me the most beautiful fabric as well. And I think I'm going to make 
I'll hold it that way because then, oops, I've got it folded into quarters actually, is that inside out? No, it's not, that's fine, I'm showing you it properly. It's just got these beautiful, to me it looks like pressed flowers, which is I think so, be, they're probably not, they're just like watercolour illustrations, but they sort of remind me of pressed flowers and I'm thinking of doing something illustrative with pressed flowers as well, so beautiful colour, really beautiful beautiful sort of delicate fabric um, with some golds and some sort of autumnal yellows and lilacs and gorgeous lovely colours, so thank you, I love that so much. I'm going to treasure that and I'm going to make possibly a bag, one of my new pleated bags. If you can hear a clicking, it's Charlie's clicky claws. Oh, and a little shake. I think she wants to go out of the room. I'll just let her out. You're going out? Go on then. Charlie's gone out. She'll probably come back in again in a minute. Um, oh, so that was some lovely stuff in the post. I've got some more things coming in the post which I'll show you in the next podcast which is going to be quite soon and I'll tell you why when I do the po next podcast. It's all to do with the post that's coming. Very exciting. Um, shall I show you some knitting because that would be a good idea wouldn't it? <laughs> it's nice to see some knitting. I've got to say I have really only knit on one thing and that's my Grace Cardigan and I still haven't finished it but I'm not very far from finishing it so I'm going to show you that. Um, I've got it in one of my new loop and bar bags. I'll just briefly show you the bag but I mainly just want to show you the knitting at the moment and I'll come back to the bags. Ta da! It's my new shape. And it's a bigger size. It's got a handle. It's my first loop and bar bag to have a handle on. I don't normally put handles on because they're drawstring bags that I usually make. So obviously this one's a zipper. And it's got a big pocket inside as well. So you can put separate things in there if you want to. Um, and it's fully lined with the Tilda fabric, that one. And this is mine, this one. But I have been selling these ones in the shop. And... I said I wasn't going to do too much on the bag at the moment, and I'm showing you the bag loads. But anyway, I've got that size and that size. I don't know if you can see all of that. If I do that, you probably can. So, yeah, I've been making that shape. They've got a roundy bottom, that's what I'm calling them. The roundy bottom pleat bag. And they've got pleats. Just a design feature. They've got some piping, just because I thought it looked pretty. So, yep, there aren't any in the shop right now, but there will be some more of those in the shop um, soon because they've gone down very well and I really love making them. And I still will be doing... Sorry about the clicking. <laughs> Charlie's just sniffing around the room a bit. What do you want, Charlie? Go and lay down. Go and lay down. I don't know what she wants. Um, I will still be putting the little sweet and simple drawstring bags in as well because I still love those and still love making those and I think people still like them too. I think Charlie's going to disturb the tripod. No, she's not. Okay, she wants to go out again, honestly. She can do it herself. <laughs> um, knitting. Right, okay, here's the Grace Cardigan. I don't know how I have not finished this yet because it's weeks and weeks and weeks since I did my la last podcast, I know, as usual. Um, so I'm not sure oh, how I haven't finished this and I'm halfway through. <laughs> I've just realised I'm halfway through a row but it's only on a sleeve. I think I'll finish it quickly. Um, I don't know if you can see me knitting or if that's below the camera. I'm just going to finish it while I tell you a little bit more about the cardigan. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm not very good at... I'm getting better at knitting when I'm not looking at it, but probably when I don't have to concentrate on what I'm saying so much, like if I'm watching telly or listening to Avion talking about cricket and trying to explain the rules of um, cricket and what things like LBW stand for and what is the night watchman. I mean, I'm listening and I'm nodding, but I'm not really concentrating 100%. I'm thinking about the knitting. Oh, 
that was the needles. Okay, so I've just finished that row. Here is the Grace Cardigan so far. I love it so much. I think the last time I showed you, I hope you can see it all. I'm not sure what I can get in the shot. I know I always say this, but I haven't got one of those view, view things. I don't. I can't see what I'm showing you, basically. Um, I'll briefly say, because you probably, if you've seen the podcast before, the previous episode you will already know the details if you haven't you can just go back to the previous episode if you want to find out more but it's drops alpaca and it's in olive it might be dark olive mix or just olive mix can't remember I think it's dark olive mix anyway that's the colorway so I'm going to put this on to show you how much I've done I think the last time I showed you I hadn't done any of the sleeves and I probably hadn't even finished the body either so oh it's going everywhere Oh, and I've got, oh, I've, got a t I've got a top on that does that thing where it bunches up when you put a cardigan on, so that wasn't the best choice. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to speed this up for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'll just speed it up for you when I show you. Let's just get that down there. Okay. Okay, right, I think I'm there. Now it looks a bit weird, I'm just going to grab these so they can stop making a clangy noise. I'm tangled up, I'm sitting on the yarn as well. Right, okay, so it looks a little bit weird because um, the arm is, the sleeve is sort of hanging off. The reason is because I'm knitting it flat. I don't know if I had explained that to you in the last episode, but basically the pattern will have you, the pattern says to when you put your sleeve stitches back on to knit the sleeve down in the round um, but for me that changed the tension and the gauge of the fabric far too much so um, I decided to knit it flat basically so I used the magic loop method for the first few inches just to get it up past out of the sort of funnel if you like um, but obviously didn't join in the round I went backwards and forwards using a kind of magic loop and then eventually once you've done a few inches you can flatten the whole thing out and knit it just in one row. So I knit the whole sleeve flat all the way down and I've got some ribbing at the bottom of the sleeve. So I'm not really sure, I don't know where to put them. So there's the ribbing. And then I seamed up the sleeve. Um, I've left this bit here open because I'm thinking I might cast on not cast on, pick up some stitches just along here, along the side of the rib here, and knit out uh, out this way, oh, I don't, yeah, knit out this way, and um, a few rows of fine garter stitch, and then include some buttonholes, and make a button band, basically, for the cuff. Um, I've got two sizes of buttons, a larger size for the front of the cardigan, and I bought the smaller size buttons just because I loved them. I hadn't thought of the idea of putting them on the cuffs at the time that I bought them. But that sort of just came into my head, so I thought maybe I could use them that way. Um, so I will try that out and see how that works. If it doesn't work, it's okay, I can just pull it off, pull it down and then just seam up yeah, the rest of there. So I love that so far. And then here's the other sleeve. Um, I've got my little teacup progress keeper. Really cute. I just like I just like putting something cute on my knitting basically. Um, I'm down to I can't go back any further because my stool's in the way. I'm down to there. Um, I've done the ribbing, although it does keep actually just let me put my stool out of the way. And then I can stand back a bit further. So I'm I think I'm happy with the length. Um, but the only thing is I might need to knit a bit more of the ribbing because it keeps popping up and folding up, as you can see, maybe, hopefully. Um, however, the ribbing on the sleeve sits really nice and flat, so I'm wondering if I need to just redo the ribbing, well, not redo it, but add some more length to it, maybe knit another inch onto the ribbing just to make it sit flat. And I don't mind if that gives it a little bit of extra length. Um, I'm quite happy with the length as it is, but I don't mind if it gets a bit of extra length. Um, and then the next thing to do after this sleeve is finished is to pick up stitches all the way uh, 
all the way around? No, up the front. It does go all the way around actually, the button band, but you might do it separately, you know, do the back first and then pick up the front and the, the front two sides, but I haven't read that far ahead in the pattern yet, but anyway, there's a garter stitch button band and collar, so that's the last bit to do, except I think I'm going to add patch pockets onto it as well because I think I'd love that. So that's my Grace cardigan so far, I really 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 love it, can't wait to have it finished. Um, it's taken me longer than I thought it would, um, but that's okay because I've really enjoyed it. Oh, how am I? I'm tangled up. <laughs> I've got yarn around my foot. Okay, so, hello Charlie. I've got Charlie here now. Oh, I wish you could see her. Hello. What do you want? What do you want? You want to go out probably, don't you? I think she wants to go out. You'll have to wait, Charlie. We'll have a walk after this podcast. Okay, we'll go for a walk after the podcast. Do you want to sit down? Sit down. She's just going to stand here and put her chin on my leg, I think. Right, okay, what else should I show you? Let me do some ticking. I talked about that, talked about that, and the butterfly. Ooh, felt succulent wreath! Okay, I'm going to show you the felt succulent wreath because I'm so excited about it. Actually, I just need to grab some fabric. Bear with me. <laughs> this floor is really slippery. <laughs> anyway, I might edit that bit out. Right, anyway. Um, the felt succulent wreath. So I got, I treated myself to Molly Makes magazine. It's brilliant. I think I want to subscribe to this magazine actually. But my uh, local news agent stocks it. So, you know, as long as I go in there, I think it might come out every month as long as I go in there regularly, which I do because that's where the post office is. Um, it's quite fun and exciting looking on the shelves to see if the new one makes it up. So I think I'm going to be probably regularly buying this. Um, the project that I'm working on, you have to buy all the materials for this. This wasn't a kit. Um, I did the little custard cream key ring, which I haven't brought upstairs to show you, which was this. Oops. Um, and that came as a little kit on the front of the magazine and it was loads of fun to do and I love it and it's on my car keys and my house keys so I've got a little custard cream to carry around with me which is fun and that was just like a really quick little project to do extremely satisfying because it took about 10 minutes not even that and then you had a beautiful little key ring but the project that I'm doing now out of the magazine is the it's called Green Living it's a succulent wreath And you'll have seen some footage in the intro um, of the progress of the project. So um, it lists underneath the project page. Um, it basically tells you how to do it. And there's templates in the back of the magazine. Or you can download them. The magazine's online. So if you haven't got a hard copy of it, you can still do the project by going online um, and downloading the templates from there. Um, for the little leaf shapes, which I will show you in a second. So... Here's my tub of succulent leaves so far. And basically, what I did was, um, I've left the felt all the way over there, but you'll see the felt in a minute. I bought some sheets of felt from a website called Cloudcraft. Um, it's a UK website, so I think it's Cloudcraft. It could be .com, I'm not sure, but if you Google Cloudcraft, um, you'll probably find it. And they sell felt um, and felting... Uh, felt as in sheets of fabric felt um, and other crafting materials like that. So I bought um, the colours that were in the wreath um, and I think I got like two sheets of each because I thought I might want to make more of these so I got more than I needed really. But you could get away with one A4 sheet of felt um, in each colour easily, easily. So I can't remember what the colours were called actually but these are the little shapes um, and the resulting succulents that you get. I got a glue gun because uh, you could sew them. If you don't have a glue gun, you could probably stitch these, but totally recommend glue gunning because it's a lot of fun. I know it's hot, so it's maybe not so brilliant for kids. Um, you could probably use some different type of glue for children, but glue gun, it's instant. Oh, it's a bit stringy, actually, but it is instant. And I spent a lovely... Uh, Saturday, I'm going to call it a craft-a-noon. Um, it was last 
or was it Sunday? I think it was Sunday because we were up a mountain on Saturday. No, no, we did this on Saturday. We went up the mountain Sunday. Getting confused doesn't really matter. Anyway, I spent a nice Saturday afternoon um, at my coffee table with um, Charlie on the sofa next to the coffee table and Avion. I was going to come up here and do it in the craft room and I said to Avion, I'm off to do my wreath now and he said, oh. And I said, do you want me to stay down here and do it in, in here with you while you watch the football? Football. I had to watch, I had to listen to the football but that was okay because I was doing my wreath which was a, a good consolation. Um, so we decided stay together in the living room for company um, as long as he made me a cup of tea and helped me sort out all the shapes because I'd cut them all out and then I'd got them all jumbled up. So bless him, it was so sweet. I sat gluing and he sat opposite me sorting out all my shapes for me which was really sweet. Um, and this is what I made. So here's the first one, this is the artichoke succulent shape. This is my favourite I think. And um, it's made with, this is the only one I don't have any of the shapes left. So if I just do that, you can see the shapes that it's made of. Basically it's all of these little shapes. There's quite a lot of each sh of this shape in each artichoke. And they are glued around a little felt ball, which also I got that from Cloud Craft as well. So. I love it. And that's what it looks like, um, hopefully. Okay, I don't know why, but the camera just went off again. So there you go. There's the artichoke succulent. And the, that's what shapes make up the succulent. Lots of those all glued around a little felt ball. I made three of those so far. Oh. <laughs> So there's three of those. Um, these ones, don't know what they're called, but little sort of round pinky ones. I think they're like flowers, succulent flowers. They're just made of strips of felt folded over and then you cut um, into the folded edge and then you basically just glue it and roll it up and you end up with this. That's the bottom of it. It's so easy to do. If you think you might like to have a go of this, I definitely recommend trying it. Um, and on Pinterest, I did have a look because I've got so much into these felt flowers. Um, if you go on Pinterest and just put into the search felt flowers, there are loads of lovely images, um, tutorials and ideas and templates for lots of different types of felt flowers, not just succulents. So um, if you fancy having a go, that's a good place to go and have a look for ideas as well. Um, now this succulent is made with this shape. So lots of those, I really hope that's, I don't know if you've just seen my face now. Lots of those glued together in a sort of fan like that and then you roll up the bottom and glue it like that and you get those. Ooh. That's a lovely one. And then there's this one made in this shape, this shape Lots of that shape makes this flower, uh, or pl little plant. Try not to lose my shapes because I need those still. And this is a little spiky one. Whoops. So lots and lots of these, I had to cut out lots of them, made this one. And, well, oh, this one's really exciting. It's really bright pink. So this shape, see they're really simple shapes as well to cut. Made this one. So I've made a few of these and they'll be dotted around for a lovely big pop of colour. And um, this one hasn't got a shape because this, again, this is just a strip. You saw this, I think you saw me cutting this one out in the intro. It's a little strip with some... Um, a long strip with some spikes cut into the top and then you just roll it up, glue it at the bottom. Look, it's just rolled up like a Swiss roll. And then you get these succulent plants. So um, I've made nearly all of them. I haven't made all of them because I just wanted to show you the shapes 
just cut before I'd glued them. So I've still got a few more to put together, which is exciting because I really love doing it. I might make a few extra. And in the magazine, in the tutorial, um, the directions are to make a round base for your wreath out of cardboard. But I am going to attempt, don't know if it will work, to make mine in fabric. Um, I'm hoping that by cutting out two donut shapes and stitching them and turning them inside out and stuffing it, um, I will hopefully get a wreath shape. So, and I'm going to use this, which is some Tilda fabric. Um, I just thought this is a really good fabric to use because it's kind of in my stash. I've used actually some of this for some of the bunting. Um, it goes really nicely with the bunting, but I've decided I wanted to use it for my wreath um, just because I thought it's the perfect colour. It's greens and blues, and I think that they'll sit really nicely on there. Um, you're not really supposed to see the background anyway, but I just thought if it does show through, then that would be nice that it's this green pattern. So hopefully if that works, the base is going to be made of fabric and instead of glue gunning them onto the base which is what you would do if you had a cardboard base um, I think I'm going to stitch them on I think I'm going to stitch them on I haven't I'll, I'll try it and see how fiddly it is and if it's too fiddly especially because the base of these succulents have got glue on them it might make them too hard to stitch so I'm not sure if that will work yet but uh, in my mind that's what I'm going to do that was my plan so Hopefully I'll be able to stitch them on. If not, I'll probably scrap the idea and do a cardboard base and um, uh, and just glue them on. Either way, I'm going to have a beautiful succulent wreath. So the next time I show you it, it will be finished. Um, I'll show you something that I got. I haven't got any... Oh, I have got a little bit of knitting. I'll just show you another little bit of knitting. Um, I got two books, by the way. I still have not tried out my lino cutting. Um... I've still got so much to show you, I don't know how long this podcast has been already. Um, okay, I'm just going to go quite quickly. <laughs> I got a new book on block printing. I showed you a, um, a book in my previous podcast on screen printing, um, and I've got some equipment to try that. I still haven't tried it yet. I've been so busy making bags, I think that's what it is that I've been doing, and going up mountains, and uh, going on canoes and things. But... Um, I'm gearing myself up. I actually bought a large plastic storage box with a lid on it so I can store all of my lino cutting and screen printing and designing stuff in. So, And I bought some plain Tilda fabric. It's just a cream, like an off-white. Um, that's what I'm going to have a go at printing on because it's a really beautiful quality fabric. So hopefully that's what I'll be using to do my own printing onto. Um, but this book, I'll just show you a couple of images from the book. Um, they show you all sorts of techniques, um, such as making little printing blocks out of perspex and foam. So they start off again, like the other book did, with some quite simple and basic techniques where you don't need to have too much equipment. You can just imprint some uh, images into foam and stick them onto some perspex or something like that, and then make some nice tiled prints with those, so I might give that a go. Um, and then all the way through to doing multicolour um, lino or block printing. So this is where you, you draw out a design, you transfer it onto some soft lino. Um, I've got the tools, I've got the lino and I've got the tools. I bought this kit. I've really invested in, in the idea of doing some lino cutting, so I definitely need to start doing it soon. Um, but this is the kit, and it contains the lino cutting tools, the roller, the palette, some ink, um, the thing that you, the thing that you do that on the paper with to get the image on the paper. I don't know the words for lino cutting yet, so anyway, um, and some lino and some rubber. You can do some rubber stamp. Um, uh, printing, cutting out and printing as well, so I'm really excited to try all of that and I think once I've made a few more bags and used up some of the fabrics that I've got in my fabric box for the Etsy shop, um, I'm trying to use up some of that fabric because I feel as if until I've used up the fabric that I've got there, I don't feel as if I can start doing any designing of my own, it's like there's a mental block, like I need to use what I've got before I can move on to the next project, which is the printing of the fabric. So 
In the meantime, I'm harvesting ideas and nurturing ideas, and I will try to start sketching soon, I think. Well, I've done a few sketches because I've showed you those as well, but I've got some, I want to start with something simple, just to try out the technique of the actual printing and see how that works. So, that's in the pipeline. Um, I got this for my birthday, I'm going to show you another book, and it's going to lead to me showing you a little bit of knitting. This is so exciting. Uh, again, Delis, who is Avion's sister who gave me the lovely mug, um, also gave me this for my birthday. Oh, It is the most amazing book ever. She was really nervous in case I already had it, but in actual fact I've only got one knitting book and it's a basic uh, knitting stitch dictionary. It's got about 30 stitches in it, that's all. It's not even a big, really great big massive one. Um, I haven't even got one of those, I'd really love one of those. Um, but I never seem to be able to find the courage to invest in one for some reason, even though I buy loads of yarn all the time, so that's on my wish list for the future. But this was an amazing, really, really wonderful um, birthday present, and it's knitted birds, so it's full of... I wonder if I can do the thing where I flick through the book. Oh, I don't know if I can on camera, because uh, I'm left-handed, so I don't know if this will work, but if I do that... <laughs> You might uh, get a glimpse of what's in the book, hopefully. Or you might just see some sort of weird blurred stuff. Um, <laughs> I'll just show you a couple close-up. Oh, there's owls, they're so sweet. <clears throat> oh, right, these ones are, what are they? There's a Canada goose. <laughs> I love this. But there's the back of the book, because that gives you a good idea of what's in there as well. So basically it's garden birds and British birds. Um, there's a sparrow. They're so lovely. Kingfisher. So I have cast on a bird. And funnily enough, it's actually not a bird that's in the book, although I'm using a pattern for a bird. So. De um, Delith's husband, Delith who gave me the book, uh, her husband, my brother-in-law, um, he runs bird watching tours in Snowdonia, so you can pay him and he will, he's a guide basically, a bird watching tour guide um, for part of his job, that's what he does, and he takes people around various places in Snowdonia to go and see whatever birds that they want to see, um, and he really loves the chuff, that's his favourite bird. I've got my wildlife book here to show you the chuff because there isn't a chuff in here. But I looked it up and oh, I know what a chuff is, um, but I wasn't sure what it was similar to. Um, but it looks very similar to the raven and the rook. Um, looking at the bird's wings, it's got the same shape wings, it's a similar size. So here is the chuff. This is my wildlife bird identifying book. And it basically looks like a sort of raveny type of bird, but with an orange beak and orange legs. If there's any experts on birds out there, I'm really sorry if I've oversimplified the chuff. But, you know, in terms of knitting one, that was the best I could go with. And I have got a pattern for a raven in the book. So I'm knitting the raven and I've done his body so far. And then obviously I'm just going to give him an orange beak and orange legs and hope that that works. I think that, um, and that's because Gareth had said to Delith he really wanted a knitted chuff to put in his van. Um, he's got like a big people carrier van where he takes, that he uses to take people on his tours. So he wants a knitted chuff to put in the van. So he's getting a knitted sort of chuff, <laughs> um, but it's going to look like a chuff. So that's the raven. So I'm basically knitting that pattern out of this book. I can't stop looking through the pages, the different pages of it. I'll show you the one that I want to do next for Avion, because that's his favourite bird. And here's what I'm knitting. Whoops. Here's the chuff so far. This is the yarn. It's probably not very interesting to show because it's just black yarn, but it's um, Debbie Bliss Blue Face Leicester. It's really beautiful yarn, actually. It's got a lovely quality, a lovely sheen. It's almost blue. It's that sort of, it's a beautiful raven black, actually, so it's perfect. And it's slightly rustic, so I really like that too. Um, I've done the body, which is just a rolled up bit of fabric at the moment, so you, it really isn't going to be, you're not going to see very much, but basically it's, some, it's a one big shape with increases in it. 
and um, I think that's the bottom of it. Yeah, you're not really going to be able to tell anything from that because it's just rolled up. But that's going to be stitched and stuffed and hopefully it will be bird shaped. Um, and then that's where I've got so far. I'm on to the wing bits. You just do the wing parts then. So there's not too much to show you, but hopefully by the next podcast episode I will have finished it and I can show you a full chuff before I give it to um, Gareth to put into his van. <laughs> um, and then after that, I basically want to knit every bird in this book because it's just they're all just so gorgeous. But Avion used to see these birds on the farm a lot. Um, that in Welsh, I think he calls them the Con Chwitlan. And we call them, in English, the lapwing. Um, and he, he used to see them nesting a lot on our farm. Um, and the person that used to do the tractor work, if it wasn't avian, we used to have someone else coming in to do the tractor work, um, was an animal lover and a bird lover. And he used to be really careful, a really gentle giant, big man he was. Um, and he used to come and do the tractor work and on this giant tractor with the great big cutter thing on the back when he was cutting for the silage, he actually used to watch out for the lapwing nests which were would be in the tall grass um, and go around them and leave them, which is so sweet. Um, and that's what the lapwings look like. They're, they've got a big tuft on their, on their head. Obviously that's a knitted lapwing, not a real one. Yeah, so they don't probably look exactly like that, but <laughs> what I really love about that one is um, the yarn that they've used for this is quite a heathered yarn so I think that's going to be lovely going to the knitting shop at knit, on knit night which is tonight yay knit night tonight um, not tonight I won't buy some more yarn but probably next week when I finish the chuff um, I shall be buying some nice heathered yarn um, I'll probably look for some tweedy or heathered yarn from the knit shop and do the lapwing knit so um, I was going to show some more stuff <laughs> Again, I was going to show you my sewing. I've got that out. I want to show you the fabric for that. I'm going to do this. I'll do this really quickly um, because I should have showed you this weeks ago. Avion bought me some fabric for my birthday. What happened was actually Avion offered to buy me a dress for my birthday to go to the wedding, the family wedding that we went to that was shortly after my birthday. Um, and I said, how about buy me some fabric and I'll make a dress. And he said, okay. So I took his wallet to the fabric shop and bought myself some fabric from him, which was lovely, and got this beautiful fabric which I'm going to show you now, um, which is not in a dress form, it's still in its fabric form because the dress didn't get made in time. I don't know what I was thinking, I didn't have very much time really to be honest, but this dress will get made and it will be beautiful and I can't wait to make it. And I didn't want to rush it, I wanted to get it right because I'm doing the pattern for myself. Again, if you saw a bit of, um, if you watched the intro, you'd have seen me doing a little bit of pattern cutting and drawing out. So that was the block for this dress. So basically, this is the fabric. I wonder if I can fold it out more. You might be seeing it upside down. I'll just go back a bit. Um, it's just got, it's quite unusual for me really, because it's got quite a tropical sort of um, feel to it, actually. I love Oh, I nearly got tea on it. I just love the colours of this fabric. It's like on a duck egg blue, almost sort of jacquard, jacquardy sort of weave. Um, and then it's got these birds in the flowers. I just really loved how it was, it's bright colours without being garishly bright. Um, and I think it's, it's a fabric that I can wear and get away with having some bright colours on me without me looking washed out or anything. So. Um, it, it just looks really pretty, so I'm going to make a tea dress out of that, and um, these are the pattern pieces, so far, only two of the pattern pieces, um, there's not, obviously it doesn't include the skirt part of it, um, so that's what I've got so far, but I'm still at the fitting stages, so that's the back, so you cut two of those, um, and there'll be a zip here, so you'd have that that and then another piece there and a zip up the back that's where the fastening will be and this is the front piece with the darts in so there'll be darts um, and, uh, at the side of the bust and down to the waist um, and I just wanted it to have a simple neckline to about here and just be a sleeveless dress basically 
Um, and that's, you cut that on the fold, which is, would be here, so it would be like that, if you can imagine, that would be one piece. Um, and the twirl, I've done a twirl. The one that you saw in the intro was in a sort of green fabric, and this, so I've done like several, I don't know how many versions I've done so far, just trying to get the fit right, because you, when you, when you um, are drawing out the pattern yourself, you have to take your measurements, and then you transfer those into a, what you call a block. Um, which is a basic body shape for your measurements and then you add style lines so if you want whatever your neckline to look like and where you want your sleeves to be that kind of thing just to say it in a nutshell um, and darts you might move them or add them or take them out um, and then you basically have to make a toile or a muslin um, to see what the fit is and how the shape looks on your body so after Oh, I don't know, about four versions. This is what I've got at the moment. Um, and it's obviously, this is just, it's not scrap fabric. The lining will be in this fabric, actually, but I've got a lot of this pink fabric. It's a really nice cotton. Um, I won't make all of my twirls in this. I thought I'd got the fit right, so I started making the lining, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to check it again. Um, and that will be the back. I've pinned it, but that's where the zip will be. It'll be a concealed zip. Um, so that's the shape of it, and that's, I won't put it on because I've got a top on already. It doesn't look good like that because it's not on properly, it just looks all bumpy, but... <laughs> Why did I just do that? <laughs> um, but anyway, that's what I've got so far. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the sewing because I um, started that so long ago, and but I don't want to rush it, so it's going to be a project that I'll do in my spare time. Um, at weekends and um, yeah just when I've got some spare time and then hopefully by the time we get invited to another wedding or something special I'll have that dress ready and made um, and the skirt by the way it will be gathered and will just fall from um, I don't know if you can see my waist but it will fall from here just in gathers basically and it will have some in the seam pockets so that's my sewing I won't show you the trousers because I haven't done anything on them since the last time I spoke to you and I haven't even showed you them yet so um, what I will show you very quickly is my new Notions pouch. Ta -da! You might have seen these already because I've been listing them in the shop. They've been selling on Etsy, which has been lovely. Um, I'm still doing the square ones as well, but I thought I'd experiment with some roundy shapes and piping. These are a little bit more expensive than the square ones because there's more detail in them. Um, and they've got, like the piping for example, um, and the shape of it and they've also got what have they got why do I want to say that <laughs> oh they're interlined yeah oh no the other ones are interlined anyway but yeah it's to do with it just takes longer to make these because they've got the piping in them and just because of the shape so that's my roundy bottom notions pouch um I'm loving those so I've, I've kept one for myself I've sent one to my friend Emily she's got one um and it was to complement the shape of the new bags um the roundy bottom bags that I'm doing so that's what's new in the shop, and um, the very last thing I'm going to show you, let me just look at my, yes, excellent, the very last thing I'm going to show you is quite possibly the next thing, well, something I'm going to cast on very, very soon. I actually haven't got the pattern photo to show you, but I will put a picture in here. It's the Oscuro jumper. I always want to say Obscuro. It's called the Oscuro jumper or sweater and it's by Sarah Shepherd. and I saw an Instagram post weeks ago um, of her at, what was the event? Some sort of wool shop event, which I've totally forgotten, um, which a lot of people were Instagramming about that day, so it was a national thing, I think. And there was a beautiful picture of, I think it was Sarah, um, in a blue version of this jumper, knitted in a yak yarn, I think, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's her design, and it's got cables. Well, you'll have seen it if I've put the photo in. Um, I fell in love with that beautiful cable on the front and the lovely texture in the middle of it. Um, so I'm going to knit that for my autumn stroke winter, early winter jumper to keep me lovely and cosy. And guess what colour it is? Green. I got some Cascade... Um, 220 superwash after a lot of deliberation 
Um, I basically took about uh, a weeks really, a, few, a good couple of weeks, maybe a few weeks to look through all the different yarns and see what I wanted to make it in. Um, Madeline Tosh was in the running at one point, um, but in the end I decided to go for the Cascade 220 because I do actually really love this yarn. I've used it before and I just could see myself wearing that jumper in a deep, deep green even though I'm just in the middle of knitting a green cardigan. But the different garments and green really suits me. So that's okay, I don't mind that. <laughs> so that's my Cascade 220. Um, I've got, how many balls did I buy? One, two, three, four, six balls of it. Oh, oh it's lovely. <laughs> that I think was my cue. <laughs> to stop podcasting now to finish this podcast because um, the camera ran out again and uh, that means that I've been talking for a really long time. Yes, I have. But there's nothing unusual there. I'll probably have to edit quite a bit out. Um, so I'll just put my yarn away. That's going to be possibly my next cast on. However, there is some yarn coming in the post. Very exciting. I won't tell you now. I will tell you in the next episode, but I'll give you a clue. Blacker yarns. I didn't buy it either. Um, I was contacted by, this is more than a clue, I'm just telling you now. Um, I was contacted by Blackie Yarn and the lovely Katie, who's Katie Greenbean on Instagram, hello Katie, <laughs> um, contacted me, she's part of the team at Blackie Yarns, and asked if I would like to receive a sample of their new yarn that they're going to bring out in September. So it's not on the website at the moment, it's a new yarn that they've designed and Katie's taken part in designing it. Um, uh, for, all the way from the blend of the um, fibres and the, what goes into it and um, down to the ball band, I believe she designed the ball band as well. She did. I don't just believe it, I know it. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited because that's coming in the post. Um, I, I've had a description of it, I've had some details about um, what the yarn is, but I can only imagine the beauty of this yarn. It sounds absolutely gorgeous, it sounds divine and I will tell you much more about it when it arrives. So um, I'll see what I get when it comes in the post and the idea is that I will knit something with that um, and then give a review of it on the podcast um, to see what I think about it and show it off. Um, and yeah, so I will wait and see when that comes. Um, I'll probably receive that. I don't know if I'll get it tomorrow. Maybe I will. That's so exciting. If I don't get it tomorrow, I won't get it till Monday because I'm going away for the weekend to see my parents and uh, some family uh, and friends. Um, and Avion's going off to Exeter to see his friend. So we're going our separate ways for the weekend. Charlie's coming with me. I'm not leaving her this time. She's coming to my dad and dad's, my stepmom's um, house with me. So, yeah. And the guinea pigs, uh, my friend will look after them, but I'm only going to be away for one night, really, I think. So, um, but my friend's going to come up and, uh, and feed the new puppies. So, very excited for my yarny post. Can't wait for that to come. Very excited to finish my succulent wreath. Very excited to take Charlie on a dog walk because I think she really needs to go on one. So uh, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, wishing you all a very lovely week. Um, I will be podcasting, and I definitely will be podcasting again very soon because um, the new Blacker Yarns sample that I'm going to receive. The, the yarn will be released in September. I'm not sure when, at what date. I will tell you that nearer the time when I know more. Um, Katie might have said it in the email. And I've forgotten. Anyway, I know it's being released in September and so I will need to knit something with it and podcast about it before it gets released. So I can't wait because it's a really wonderful incentive for me to podcast a little bit sooner than I normally do, which is what I always intend to do. So that's been a really fabulous uh, it will be a great motivation for me to do that as well. So I will see you very soon. I wish you all a wonderful week um, ahead. I hope some of you get some sunshine or rain if you need it. Some people are waiting for rain. Seems, seems crazy to me because we've just had nothing but rain. But it's sunny now, so I'm off out into the sunshine with Charlie. And um, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and a very quick thank you to everybody who's come to the Etsy shop. Everybody who has shown support for the Etsy shop and especially um, every so often I just want to remember to say a really big thank you to the people who, firstly if you're a customer um, or if you've just been to have a look, 
Um, but a really massive thank you to you if you have left me a review on Etsy because you've been so generous. Um, people have left such wonderful, really kind and lovely reviews on Etsy and I really appreciate it. So um, I just want to say thank you if you've left a review. Um, a very specific and special thank you to you for that. <laughs> um, very much appreciated. Okay, right, I'm going to go. So have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.